and they lie, and lie, and lie, and lie. For example, for months, President Trump has repeatedly complained that the House denied him the right to call witnesses, to cross-examine witnesses, and so forth. You heard Mr. Cipollone repeat this lie today. Well, I have with me the letter that I sent as chairman of the House Judiciary Committee last November 26th, inviting the President and his counsel to attend our hearings, to cross-examine the witnesses, to call witnesses of his own, and so forth. And I have the letter, the White House letter, signed by Mr. Cipollone, rejecting that offer. We've been respectful of the Senate. We've made our arguments to you. And you don't deserve, and we don't deserve, what just happened. Mr. Nadler came up here and made false allegations against our team. He made false allegations against all of you. He accused you of a cover-up. He's been making false allegations against the President. The only one who should be embarrassed, Mr. Nadler, is you. Mr. Cipollone says, President Trump is a man of his word. Well, it's too late in the evening for me to go into that one, except to say this. President Trump gave his word he would drain the swamp. He said he would drain the swamp. And what have we seen? We've seen his personal lawyer go to jail, his campaign chairman go to jail, his deputy campaign chairman convicted of a different crime. His associate's associate, Lev Parnas, under indictment. The list goes on and on. That's, I guess, how you drain the swamp, is you have all your people go to jail. I don't think that's really what was meant by that expression. But for the purposes of why we're here today, how does someone who promises to drain the swamp coerce an ally of ours into doing a political investigation. That is the swamp. That's not draining the swamp, that's exporting the swamp. I think it is appropriate at this point for me to admonish uh, both the House managers and the President's counsel in equal terms uh, to remember that they are addressing the world's greatest deliberative body. One reason it has earned that title is because its members avoid speaking in a manner and using language that is not conducive to civil discourse. Um, in the 1905 Swain trial, a senator objected when one of the managers used the word pettifogging, and the presiding officer said the word ought not to have been used. I don't think we need to aspire to that highest standard, but I do think those addressing the Senate should remember where they are.